So I'm setting it up different. Last time I had, I think you can also hear my computer audio. No, you can't. Okay, that's good. I don't think you can. Anyway, as uh, last time I set up uh, my writing program, which I guess is called Scrivener and not Scrivener, I saw I was I spent like two hours last night unfilmed unstreamed messing around with styles in Scrivener so I had to go watch some YouTube videos uh, and it turns out I was pronouncing it wrong so it's Scrivener a lot of words I actually don't know how they're pronounced because I never actually heard them pronounced I just guess Scrivener not Scrivener the funny thing is, when I first saw the word, I thought it was going to be Scrivener, but then I changed my mind. Anyway, so uh, what happened since last time, unstreamed, is I uh, set the style. So a Scrivener has an interesting thing where it, you compile it like a computer program, like you write code for a computer program, you compile it into an actual working program. So uh, in the same way, the text you write, it's going to compile it where it adds all the formatting stuff. So uh, I'll write in whatever uh, is the official style guide I talked about last time is in Arial. I think it's, who knows how they're pronounced? Uh, Arial, but I can write in whatever I want. And when I compile it, it'll come out in Arial because it's set in its own compiling settings. So this is all. All that stuff here. So it's, it's, it was like two hours of work to try to figure this out. It's actually very complicated. The rest of Scrivener is very uh, straightforward, but not the compiling styles. So I made my own style, had my own sections, uh, and then I linked the different sections. So I, the style guide I'm working off of has a primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, headers. So I set them to be uh, to be what the instructions say. And then for the intro and conclusion, there's a title list section, so I call them end caps, uh, where it uh, it won't have, it won't say introduction, sorry, I hit my desk, uh, when I compile it. And I think I have to add another one, but we'll get to that later. This formatting stuff usually uh, can be saved for the very end, really. But I was just messing around yesterday and didn't feel like actually streaming and writing. It also took a lot longer than I thought. So we'll see all the sections here. I also added more sections on a upon a closer reading of the style guide. So well, magnify it there. So the style guide the editor sent me, and they talked about the different sections I should have. So there's the headings where I talked about uh, what the different sections should look like, and then down below. There's all this other stuff, like author information, um, things I should have. So I added those sections here. You can see the author information up is a blank document up there. So let's start there. Let's start with the author information. Let's see, so I'm going to make the, the bottom one my working frame. I can see the style guide up at the top. I split the view there. So first line, chapter, appendix, title. So I believe I'm chapter 13. Though I've, I've seen my chapter listed as 12 somewhere, but it's over chapter 13. Let's see, second line is forming of author, of a title, but followed by highest degree. And highest degree is 10,000 Celsius. Just kidding. Oops, I saw Celsius wrong. Blame. Okay. Not to brag or anything. Optional third line emails and or websites. So here's my professional email. Auto capitalize that. I guess it doesn't matter. 
and I have a website. What? Actually, the website I uh, I just updated the blog today. It's I I have no time during the semester, so it, there's usually a few updates during the breaks, and then I skip the whole semester into the next break where there's suddenly five more updates. Oh yeah, so as I started out talking about my setup for streaming, so last time I it was just showing the Scrivener window. Uh, but actually, I get into other stuff. Like, for example, I'm getting the Safari right now, so uh, I couldn't show this before, but you can see my blog post talking about teaching stuff I've been doing. So, yeah, I think this works. I have a safe area on my that is being streamed, and I have a hidden area. Um, where I have OBS visible for me and my Twitch chat. And he wants to say something. Oh yeah, I guess my chapter title is technically uh, not the number. There we go. Anyway, that's an email, website. Just, I'm just I'm the sole author of this. Just I should follow the example in diversity of Oh yeah, and academic affiliations. I, I just trailed off without reading the whole instructions. Okay. So that's easy. That's one document done. Author information. Ta-da! Uh, so the next are learning objectives, but uh, I'm going to fill those out later, I think. Uh, right now, I actually want to uh, go to the introduction and up here on, I could magnify my screen and have it show up on OBS. I'm trying various key combinations to do things here. Oop, nope. Now, anyways, uh, for my outline, I have a little blurb that I wrote, and it's gonna start with a site called Jebo Erhaud. Not sure how to pronounce that. Actually, I'm gonna look that up. this SciShow video. Jabal Ehud, that's how, uh, who is this person? It's one of the Green Brothers, Hank Green pronounces it, so I'll roll with that pronunciation. Jabal Ehud, okay. So research at Jabal Ehud and talking about this, a, a very new find uh, that adds on to what we know about modern uh, Homo sapiens origin. So uh, this the intro is going to be as as textbook intros tend to be now, uh, it was it was it wasn't like this when I was a student in the '90s and early 2000s, but now the textbook, especially, uh, I'm say especially, but a lot of anthropology textbooks start the intro with a, a little anecdote, uh, something a little interesting than just uh, 
spray of information that's after that. Uh, so for mine, I'm starting out with this new find uh, because later in the conclusion, I go back to this. Uh, you know, saying that I'll go to the conclusion now. Uh, that called new discoveries all the time. Uh, that you know, this is a, a different type of science, not like chemistry or physics, where the intro classes you learn like the things that have been settled for like centuries, uh, like the periodic table and uh, Newton's laws. Uh, but paleo anthropology is it's rapidly changing even the fundamentals of uh, of what we know, uh, which is exciting to me. I think some people. And some students uh, are frustrated by that. They just want like the information, but uh, we don't have the information. We have the best view of this topic in the present time. So uh, the conclusion goes into that saying, you know, if this also my chapter is uh, chapter thirteen is later on in the book that they've learned a lot about biological anthropology that. Uh, now they're they're caught up. They they know the current version of uh, what the experts know uh, or think about this topic, and now like the, then when the next big thing hits, they're they're ready. Like they're uh, they're they're all set like mentally to uh, to add on to this knowledge along with the rest of us, along with the experts, and maybe they'll be experts one day too. So. Uh, and for the conclusion, I, I was watching this video by uh, like the, the lead researcher for, for Jabal Uhud, and his name is, and I get this wrong as well, uh, Jean-Jacques Hublin. And uh, so I talk about him in particular for the intro and conclusion. Not knowing anything about him, like I just know he's the guy who's led the team that found this interesting recent find that fits into my topic. So I was like, I hope he's a cool dude, uh, and it turns out he is. Like I, I've been uh, watching interviews uh, with him, and just and he's he's just awesome dude uh, to learn from. That as there's one, let's see. One interview, it was like almost, I think it was like 90 minutes, and it just flies by, just him talking about everything from uh, his his background, like his childhood, and uh, his views of human evolution. He actually didn't talk about his find, which is like not even just before uh, uh, he published the, uh, the Jabal Hood uh, finds, but I'm talking about everything about human evolution. And he said something really important I'm trying to call up here. I should actually just try and get the audio up for this. Which is what oh, you there it is. Yeah, yeah, YouTube audio. Um, I think this is the express. Bring it up here. <laughs> See things uh, that I've been getting into your side. Of a, a conception that we have. So, um, I would say rarely. I was a bit depressed. I mean, that's probably the normal destiny of a PhD student, I guess. But I, I had this feeling that I was born. Uh, too late in a world too old, and that many issues about what I was interested in, Neanderthals, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, etc., has been already investigated by very uh, bright 
uh, scientist. I, I, I could not be more wrong than that because in fact, first of all, uh, since I was a student, there is a number of new groups of hominid that has been found. Incredible. Second, uh, there are many aspects of the uh, biology and behavior of ancient hominids that we, we could not conceive to be accessible to scientific investigation. So the methodologies have been developing at an incredible speed. So in other words, what I'm saying is that probably I witness more progresses in the in the in, in my field since I was a student until today than probably in the previous half century. So I think it's a it's a very exciting time, and I don't think there is reasons why this would stop. You know, I tell I tell young students. Uh, right. So I was talking about how he feels about current research and and. Uh, in- Mentioned how you know, he thought everything was already discovered about uh, human evolution when he was a student, which I estimate mid seventies or eighties. Uh, but then after after that, it turns out as he became a professional, that we're learning new things all the time. Uh, that is not a stagnant field where we, everything is solved. Yeah, which I guess is satisfying in a way, but uh, also less interesting that now we're we're right in the middle of, of kind of a, a big era of, of discovery about human evolution. So, uh, so I want to incorporate that what he said. I guess he also shows up in the intro, which I haven't written yet, uh, to tie it in that he said this really cool thing uh, that I want to include in my inclusion. So, what? And I've already watched this video, of course, and I uh, already added it to my citation software, which is also new. Uh, it used to be Sente, S-E-N-T-E. Spelling doesn't matter anymore because they're, the developers have vanished. Um, they left a working app still. It still works, but I kind of the writings on the wall that it might be time to move on to an actively developed software. So I, the last week I took all my Sente stuff, uh, how many citations I have, uh, 2647, and then I moved them all to this a new software. And it's pretty cool. I It's familiar for those who use Sente and uh, it seems pretty stable and stuff. I think I had one weird, crashy incident, uh, but it's not, not unusual. But anyway, so I added this video already because uh, later I'll be using bookends to make my bibliography for me. Uh, and I've already used added this group called Textbook. I added some of the things I have already that relate to my topic and also added uh, this video clip. And in the notes, uh, See that I I transcribed the, what he said about the, the study of human evolution, so I can use that as as part of my conclusion. So I write the conclusion first. I think this is where I'm most inspired right now. You know, see. And so as you get down to it, I'll just start writing stuff. Uh, good thing about, I actually grew up with typewriters uh, where the you know writing is a lot more permanent. Uh, if you want to change something, you have to retype a large portion of what you've written, uh, on at least on that page. So now with you know computer-based, I wish everyone is now used to. Uh, you can just type stuff, and if it works out, you keep it. If it doesn't work out, you get rid of it, and no one would know except it's being recorded for a live stream. Okay, so I can uh, involve the quote and then write around it because I, I know that this is going to be part of this conclusion.
in solely this discover give credit where it's due. And this might be pared down later. The lead researcher of the team might just turn into uh, the lead researcher who uh, found these new teach uh, of the air hood. See, and the turn it because is a is a lengthy quote. So I'm not gonna just have a big quote that with all this stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn down to the most important stuff. So ask. Launch directly into the quotes. And then stick the quote into the sentence. Rolls. And of course, these are direct quotes with a via citation there later. So you mark that you used to think there was the most research by students and practice from sapiens. Da da da, he said some stuff in there. I've been investigated by a very bright scientist. Yeah, switch over, use he to start the last sentence. I'll just go with last name. Let's see, and how his work is also not just his work, right? Because it's a ton of researchers in, in present day. So try and incorporate that.
that would completely change. There's a lot of articles that say, like, you know, whatever discovery uh, showed Darwin was wrong, or whatever discovery turns evolution on his head, uh, that's those are those headlines are uh, inaccurate, and because they 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 do work with what Darwin discovered, and they do work with the previous discoveries, but they they add detail to to what we know. Let's say add detail. So I'll go back to a, an, another quote in, in his answer. Says, "Where is it?" And look at my uh, book ends notes. This is off screen. Do you think? And so he said, I think it's a very exciting time, and I don't think there's a reason why this would stop. He goes on, though, and his next bit is also very quotable. It says, I tell young students, scientists, I say, so you know it's going to continue. Uh, and it's a good quote because you know, this book is, is for young students. Uh, scientists, young scientists. So it, it directly applies to to the target reader of this. So I'd like to include that in here. I think I'll just I'll just it is directly after the sentence I wrote. I've never been clear about quoting a quote, so I'm going to uh, look this up. This, I anticipate it will involve lots of typing, so I'm going to actually mute myself. All right, that was fast. I just typed uh, how to quote or grammar quote a quote into Google and it came up with this, this site, Grammarly. Actually, I have a Grammarly plugin in, uh, installed, so hopefully, be sure they, they know their stuff. And it's a, a very good tutorial since it gets right to it as spying off of this example, double quotes and then a single quote inside. I think that's what I do anyway, but it's good to check. So I'm gonna fix that. Should put a quote colon here that next is saying to them. There we go. Also a little fun tidbit that uh, that's for American style and British convention is the opposite.
All right, and this could be the end of you know the conclusion. I think it's this quote is very good. It's going to continue, uh, and you know that's to be continued. Kind of at the point of this conclusion is that this is an ongoing process that the reader is now uh, a part of. So I can add stuff before it uh, and work and think about this ending it with this quote of his. And again, after you add the citation later, I haven't sorted out how to add citations yet, uh, but we'll, uh, I'll look that up soon. So one thing I could do is I could spice up this last bit, what appears to be the last paragraph. And actually, so I'm here, and I said with um, good old Helvetica, uh, with Scrivener, I, whatever formatting I use, it won't be what it will show up uh, in the end product. I can do whatever I want here. So I can actually, oh, one and a half spaced, mess with the zoom so uh, you, you can see this better. Yeah, I could uh, spice up the intro as I'm saying uh, Jean-Jacques uh, Bublin, the researcher, was asked about this. This is nothing. It's like he's in the Matrix. Like he's in just a blank white room talking about this. Uh, I can use a few words and make it a little nicer, uh, uh, nicer sounding. Right already lost. Try and do it in a way that doesn't show up on screen, but I guess as manually go back on YouTube. Okay, I found the video is off screen and let's see those this book ends again. I actually have the the, the articles from uh Jabba Jabawi Hood. I just want to look at the dates and see when the video relates to this. Uh, so uh, 2017. So his interview was July 2016. Okay, it was posted in 2018, so it was before uh, he, he published about this find. I'm not sure why there's two PDFs here. They're both separate things. I'll work that out later. Also, I'd like to know the context of this video. Uh, is this? An, an interview that's up for Creative Commons uh, usage, but it's made by vPro. So I have a few clues to work off of, and also a, a source link. Uh, .nl is the Netherlands, I think. So let's see, I'll, I'll investigate this stuff.
Yeah, it's the Netherlands, the site. Yeah, open images, open yielding.nl is a Creative Commons a media database based in the ne Netherlands. That's some information. I'd like to know who exactly. Like, I don't know who the interviewer is. Person. Here. Go look at VPro, see what shows up there. All right, some Intel thing called VPro, but probably not it. Let's see, so VPro, uh, there's a VPro.nl that shows up as. a Dutch media, like, channel. So I think that's where it comes from. Actually, I actually have a cousin and aunt who, and uncle, who uh, live in the Netherlands, so if, if I, could, I could ask them for, for more context about V Pro, or go to Wikipedia, which is my next stop. Okay, it's a Dutch broadcasting organization. All right, so I can give a little context to this. Starting out here, so the sentence is reintroduces him because is he's mentioned in the introduction, maybe since, uh, briefly in the middle of the chapter, and then in the conclusion. So it's been a few pages if the students reading uh, front to back. So this is important is like his name again, and what he did again is so students are oh it's the guy from the beginning. Not some, some random new person. See, so I can split this up. Uh, interview with touch broad. Broad can't type. Free pro, and that is the spelling, no periods. about his experiences. The experiences is kind of vague as about, it's not also more than his work, though I guess I only touch on that part in the paragraph. It's more like his life and work. That might be too much info. I'll just go with that for now. Work. So I'm going to hop back and re-watch that part of the interview. Humans, uh, and conversely, there are some versions of some genes which are not found in modern humans, but are known in Neanderthal. What does it mean? in terms of anatomy, biology, they were a little ahead. brain development, whatever. We don't, we don't know. It's always frustrating when you ask geneticists, you say, oh, you find this gene. So what does it mean? In general, they say, we don't know. And, and we are, that's a field that's also developing now. Uh, people are trying to find ways to uh, resolve that. Uh, and and, uh, and there is a lot of works. I think there are going to um, 
manage in the near future to bring some questions, it's some a, answers. It's a great time to be what you are. Yes, when, when I was... Uh... Uh, that's uh, interesting. It wasn't a question. Is the interview to say it's a great time for, for what, what you are? So well, this is slightly inaccurate because it wasn't asked about the state of research, human evolution, uh, but I can go reflect, reflect, reflect. Just put it on state of the field. And you see, think there was a little research by the time he was a student. So yeah, unfortunately, this is a, a long sentence. Uh, my better chopped up into two. Then thought. So adding a few words, but now into two separate sentences should make the flow a little better. Then he thought. Anatolis Homo erectus from sapiens. You're thinking about the phrase to add details to what we know about human evolution. My problem is that um, it's not just detail, but it's it's kind of it's more than that. It's not just like we're getting the, the little things in place, but we're actually learning things that doesn't make us completely rethink what what we know, but it does uncover kind of new dimensions we didn't know about. See, so an alternate uh, phrase could be that Fill out our knowledge, human evolution. So I'm using discoveries me all the time to fill out our human evolution. Fill out is kind of vague though, uh, and abstract. Okay, refine. I think refine is a better, is more accurate than detailed for what I'm talking for what I'm talking about here. Also, I like to alternate name and pronoun, other pronoun so you back then I'll turn this to Hublin and turn this one into hmm what should I turn it into
getting fought fat. Actually, right now, I'm even debating whether this quote is necessary. I just took it out. Because it's... Uh, the quote's okay, but what it says is already covered by the, the preceding sentence. Student, I think that this works. Hmm. Okay, so we have a little bit. What is this, 111 words? Uh, have a little bit of this chapter done, uh, and in the very end of of the text of this chapter. Actually, kind of getting toasty in my room, all this streaming stuff. That's uh, I think I'm gonna call it for now. I come back later, but we'll think about what to add next. Uh, maybe add to the beginning of this conclusion to uh, to lead into this section about uh, Hublin, or work on a whole other section.